Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is my Finishing the Bible in One Year project, and we are on day 235. We are in the book of Ecclesiastes, and we'll be reading chapters 5, 6, 7, and 8 today. So, so far, in Ecclesiastes, there's lots of verses that have very deep and meaningful uh, meanings. <laughs> Um, so it's, it's interesting so far. I'm very interested and I can't wait to read more. So let's just jump right in and read Ecclesiastes chapter five, verse one, keep thy foot when thou goest to the house of God or Elohim and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before Elohim. For Elohim is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore let thy words be few. For a dream cometh through the multitude of businesses, of business, and a fool's voice is known by a multitude of words. When thou vowest a vow unto Elohim, defer not to pay it, for he hath no pleasure in fools. Pay that which thou hast vowed. Better it is that thou shouldest not vow, than that shouldest vow and not pay. Suffer not thy mouth to cause thy flesh to sin. Neither say thou before the angel that it was an error, wherefore should Elohim be angry at thy voice, and destroy the work of thine hands? For in the multitude of dreams and many words there are also divers vanities, but fear thou Elohim. If thou seest the oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice in a province, marvel not at the matter, for he that is higher than the highest regardeth, and there be higher than they. Like, see, that one's really good. We need to read that again to understand, but I think I understand what it's saying. If you see, let's just try to break it down. If you see oppression of the poor and violent perverting of judgment and justice, which, let's be honest, that's today's standard in this country and around the world perverting of judgment and justice there is no justice there is no judge you know good judgment in a province marvel not at the matter so like don't be upset about it don't be like oh why is there no justice in the world okay do not marvel at it for he that is higher than the highest regardeth and there be higher than they so to me that means why should we you know worry about it essentially because these high officials these elitists who are running the world and and that are that are you know doing evil demonic things in this world and in governments around the world um there is one higher than them they think they're the top dog but our god our elohim is higher than they and they will pay and there will be perfect justice when jesus christ comes back and rules on this earth there will be perfect just justice uh, and they will get their just desserts so that's a great verse so that one verse on this one I'm talking about this one verse alone has lots of things within it in just one verse so that's just my interpretation anyway of this verse there could be many other interpretations but uh, that's where I'm getting from it so it's it kind of goes along with you know that whole do not be anxious for anything and do not worry about tomorrow sort of thing because why should we be anxious when we have a Lord we have a God that uh, wants the very best for us who is always with us who is our shield our buckler our strong tower our mountain our rock who is always with us and sees everything we see and goes through everything we go through he is with us so why should we worry why should we have anxiety why should we fear this world that perverts justice and there's violence and oppression of the poor and oppression of the unjust and everything like that so you know it goes along with give all your anxieties to god anyway sorry i'm rambling <laughs> rambling a lot for this one verse but it just makes you makes me think so i just wanted to share that with you guys anyway ecclesiastes 5 9 moreover the profit of the earth is for all the king himself is served by the field he that loveth silver shall not be satisfied with silver, nor he that loveth abundance with increase. This is also vanity. When goods increase, they are increased that eat them. And what good is there to the owners thereof, saving the beholding of them with their eyes? The sleep of the laboring man is sweet, 
whether he eat little or much, but the abundance of the rich will not suffer him to sleep. There is a sort of evil which I have seen under the sun, namely, riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. But those riches perish by evil travail, and he begetteth a son, and there is nothing in his hand. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came, and shall take nothing of his labor which he may carry away in his hand. So, here's another verse that has lots of meaning, and it reminds me of another verse where it says, um, you know, do not store treasures here on earth, store up treasures in heaven, because this life is temporal, and when we die, we go into eternity, and we can't take a single thing, a single cent, a single thing that we've done, or that we've gathered or collected with us. We take nothing. Nothing. We just return to the earth, essentially, and um, then we start our lives in eternity. And you're either in one of two places. You're down in hell, suffering for eternity, or you're in heaven with the Lord in eternal bliss. Um, there is no in-between. You're either one of two places. And it says in the, in the Bible, I forget which verse, but it says, absent from the body, present with the Lord. So if you are absent from your body, a.k.a. dead, you are present with the Lord. You are with the Lord if you are not in your body. And that is if you trust in Jesus Christ with your whole heart. Trust in his blood. Trust the blood that he shed for you. That he died on the cross. That he was buried. He rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. That he is coming again. He will be coming in glory. So, again, I'm sorry to ramble. <laughs> oh, man. I just need to make a Bible study on, on some things, I, I suppose. <laughs> I haven't done one in a while. But, anyway, my point is we need to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. Otherwise, when we die, we go to hell. No matter what we collect on this earth, no matter what we do on this earth, no matter how much fame we have on this earth, it, it's all for nothing. Because when we die, we take nothing with us. That's why it says uh, in the Bible to store up your treasures in heaven. Because in eternity, all you have is your eternal heavenly treasures. You won't have anything on earth. So anyway, that's what this, this verse reminds me of. Okay, Ecclesiastes 5.16. And this also is a sore evil that in all points as he came so shall he go and what profit hath he that hath labored for the wind all his days also he eateth in darkness and he hath much sorrow and wrath with his sickness behold that which i have seen it is good for comely want for one to eat and drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor and that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life which elohim giveth him for it is his portion Every man also to whom Elohim hath given riches and wealth, and hath given him power to eat thereof, and take his portion, and to rejoice in his labor, this is the gift of Elohim. For he shall not much remember the days of his life, because Elohim answereth him in the joy of his heart. Ecclesiastes 6, one, There is an evil which I have seen under the sun, it is common among men, a man who to whom Elohim hath given riches, wealth, and honor, so that he wanteth nothing for his soul of all that he desireth. Yet Elohim giveth him not power to eat thereof, but a stranger eateth it. This is vanity, and it is an evil disease. If a man beget a hundred children, and live many years, so that the days of his years would be many, and his soul be not filled with good, and also that he have no burial, I say that an untimely birth is better than he. For he cometh with in with vanity, and departeth in darkness, as name shall be covered with darkness. Moreover, he hath not seen the sun, nor known any thing. This hath more rest than the other. Yea, though he live a thousand years twice told, yet hath he seen no good? Do not all go to one place? All the labor of man is for his mouth, and yet the appetite is not filled. For what hath the wise more than the fool? What hath the poor that knoweth to walk before the living? Better is the sight of the eyes than the wandering of the desire. This is also vanity and vexation of spirit. That which hath been is named already, and it is known that it is man. Neither may he contend with him that is mightier than he. Seeing there be many things that increase vanity, what is man the better? For who knoweth what is good for man in this life? All the days of his vain life which he spendeth as a shadow? For who can tell a man what shall be after him under the sun? 
Ecclesiastes 7 verse 1, A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for it is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by the sadness of the countenance of the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. For as the crackling of thorns under a pot, so is the laughter of the fool. This also is vanity. Surely oppression maketh a wise man mad, and a gift destroyeth the heart. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof, and the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry, for anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? For thou dost not inquire wisely concerning this. Wisdom is good with an inheritance, and by it there is profit to them that see the sun. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But the excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Consider the work of Elohim, for who can make that straight which he hath made crooked? In the day of prosperity be joyful, but in the day of adversity consider. Elohim also hath set the one over against the other, to the end that man should find nothing after him. All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man that perisheth in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man that prolong his life in his wickedness. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself overwise. Why shouldst thou destroy thyself? Be not over much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldst thou die before thy time? It is good that thou shouldst take hold of this, yea, also from this withdraw not thine hand. For he that feareth Elohim shall come forth of them all. Wisdom strengtheneth the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city, for there is not a just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Amen to that. It says in the Bible, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I believe that's Romans 3.23. This is a reflection of that. There is not one just man upon the earth that doeth good and sinneth not. So we are all sinners. Also take no heed unto all words that are spoken, lest thou hear thy servant curse thee. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise hast cursed others. All this have I proved by wisdom. I said I will be wise, but it was far from me. That which is far off and exceeding deep, who can find it out? I applied mine heart to know and to search and to seek out wisdom and the reason of things and to know wickedness of folly, even of foolishness and madness. And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets, and her hands as bands, who, whoso pleaseth Elohim shall escape from her, but the sinner shall be taken by her. Behold, this have I found, saith the preacher, counting one by one to find out the other, which yet my soul seeketh, but I find not. One man among a thousand have I found, but a woman among all those have I not found. Lo, this only have I found, that Elohim hath made man upright. But they that have sought out many inventions. Okay, in Ecclesiastes 8, verse 1. Who is as the wise man, and who knoweth the interpretation of a thing? A man's wisdom maketh his face to shine, and the boldness of his face shall be changed. I counsel thee to keep the king's commandment, and that in regard of the oath of Elohim. Be not hasty to go out of his sight, stand not an evil thing, for he doeth whatsoever he pleaseth him. Where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? That's uh, That reminds me of um, this person who said, you know, the King James Version is the only version of the Bible that is authorized by a king. Just think about that for a second. The only translation in history, the King James Version, is the only translation out of all the translations that is authorized by a king. Just think about that for a second. There's many reasons why I like King James, and that's one of them. And I think this pertains to could pertain to that. Where the word of a king is, there is power. Whoso keepeth the commandment shall feel no evil thing, and a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. Because to every purpose there is time and judgment, therefore the misery of man is great upon him. For he knoweth not that which shall be, for who can tell him when it shall be? 
There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death, and there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver those that are given to it. All this I have seen, have I seen, and apply my heart unto every work that is done under the sun. There is a time wherein one may man ruleth over another to his own hurt. And so I saw the wicked buried, who had come and gone from the place of the holy, and they were forgotten in the city where they had so done. This also is vanity, because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily. Therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. Though a sinner do evil a hundred times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear Elohim, which fear before him. But it shall not be well with the wicked, neither shall he prolong his days, which are as shadow, because he feareth not before Elohim. There is a vanity which is done upon the earth, that there be just men unto whom it happeneth according to the work of the wicked. Again there be wicked men to whom it happeneth according to the work of the righteous. I said that this also is vanity. Then I commended mirth, because a man hath no better thing under the sun than to eat and to drink and to be merry, for that it shall abide with him of his labor the days of his life, which Elohim giveth him under the sun. When I applied mine heart to know wisdom, and to see business that is done upon the earth, for also there is that neither day nor night seeth sleep with his eyes. Then I beheld all the work of Elohim, that a man cannot find out the work that is done under the sun, because though a man labor to seek it out, yet he shall not find it. Yea, further, though a wise man think to know it, yet shall he not be able to find it. Interesting. Very interesting. I'm really liking Ecclesiastes. It really makes makes you think. It's one of those chap, one of those books in the Bible that are, have lots of deep meanings, and they're, if you take your time, you can find so many things. You can find so many meanings um, if you just take your time with each verse. So, it's one of those uh, books in the Bible where going slower would be better, so you can understand all the deep meanings. But it's really cool. Here's the daily promise. And it's John six thirty nine through forty, and this is the Father's will which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Wow, that's just awesome. You know, that's kind of like, it's basically a reflection of John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him will have everlasting life. I mean, that's just awesome. So here it says, may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So, you know, you can look at this and say, believing in him. Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Um, that could—that's not so simple. People are like, "Oh, just believe in Him." It's not as simple as that. It's changing the way you live. You know, turning your back on sin, your old life, and your old uh, ways, and trusting in the Lord, trusting in Jesus Christ. What He did on the cross, He shed every ounce of blood for you. He was buried, he died, he was buried, he rose again the third day, all according to the scriptures. You need to have faith and trust in him. Nobody can get to the Father except for through Jesus Christ, Yeshua. So, if we believe, all that I just said is belief. Real belief, not just with our mouth, not just with a prayer, but with our whole heart. And change our ways, and flee from, uh, from sin, and, you know... Commune with God, pray with God, read the word, you know, and we will have everlasting life. We will not die. We will have a resurrected uh, body, um, a better body, actually, you know. So, I, out of the two places to go, I'd rather go to heaven, and I'd rather be with my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and be in God's glory, rather than paying for my own sins. I don't want to pay for my own sins. Jesus Christ already paid for me. Why would I have to why would I want to pay for my own? I've already accepted the gift that he's given me. I don't want to have to pay for my own sins in hell. 
I don't belong there, and I don't want to be there. I want to be with God and Jesus Christ. So, that's my reflection. Here's this person's reflection of this verse, and I quote, God has promised us that Jesus will not forsake anyone that God has given him. God has given us to Jesus, and we are his prized possession, and Satan, I would have made that a small s, will not be able to snatch any of us from his grasp. We have been granted eternal life in heaven with God. Praise the Lord, exalt his name, for he is full of grace and mercy, end quote. Amen to that. Yes, he is full of mercy because Jesus died and shed his blood instead of us. He's a lamb the sacrificial lamb, so instead of us paying for our own sins, Jesus Christ already did. So we just have to have faith in his blood, that he shed every ounce of blood for us. Every ounce of blood was spilled for our sins, for our sake, past, present, and future. We are covered by the blood if we have faith and believeth on him and trust in him and turn from our ways and change our lives around and turn our lives around so anyway i know i rambled a lot in this um in this video today uh, i apologize uh but i just had all these things on my mind i just wanted to say and share with you guys so let's pray dear Jehovah, our elohim our abba thank you so much for this day and thank you for all that you've done thank you that we're able to read your word and gain knowledge and wisdom Please give us discernment so we can rightly divide your word of truth and keep everything that we read in our hearts and our minds. Please help us be an example to others and lead others to you for your sake and for your glory. Please show us your will for our lives and show us what you will do in our lives. Lead us and guide us. And I thank you for everything you've done for us, everything you're doing, everything you will do. And thank you for giving your only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. Thank you. And I pray in Jesus Christ precious holy name amen amen and amen so i thank you guys so much for watching and listening i hope you have a good evening morning night wherever you're at and as always ttfn tata for now take care god bless remember to put god first in everything you do and you'll never be sorry see you guys tomorrow with more ecclesiastes have a good one bye bye